I retired here from the National Security Agency after 30 years of playing my part to protect the United States. I did not expect to continue that role in retirement, but here I am. Because in my opinion, democracy in Loveland is in trouble and I must speak out. In recent weeks, we have heard evidence about the mayor's record of stifling free speech, both of ordinary citizens and of council members. Also, a Loveland resident caught on camera one of the campaigners for the mayor's endorsed block removing opposing candidates' um, campaign signs on election day. Removing campaign signs subverts open, free, and fair elections, and every resident should be concerned that that type of behavior is happening here. This behavior does not uphold democratic principles. Those are just two examples of democracy in trouble, but I'm gonna focus on a third. The parking garage is very controversial, and the only official feedback we have about it is the recent election. One council member indicated he was opposed to that garage, and he won the most votes. The message is clear. Loveland voted against the garage. If the mayor and the newly appointed council go forward with the garage, they do so against the will of the people. Does the will of the people matter in Loveland? Well, that's the question. During a council meeting of 11, on 11 February of last year, the mayor said, quote, residents will not be voting on the garage, end quote. When asked why residents were not allowed to vote, the mayor responded, quote, you vote on your elected officials and those are decisions we have been elected to make, end quote. An election does not provide the winning party free reign with taxpayer money. An election does not give the winning party carte blanche to permanently disfigure town without the clear support of the people. An election does not give anyone a green light to plan a large, controversial project in virtual secrecy. Elected officials should uphold the will of the people. They should give citizens a voice, not deny their voice. Residents are not mute once they leave the polling booth, as the mayor would have us believe. No, Loveland residents should retain a voice in what is decided here, especially on the largest capital expenditure in the history of Loveland. Protection from abuse of power at the federal level is enshrined in the Constitution by checks and balances between the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. What safeguards against abuse of power does Loveland have? Where are our checks and balances? How does Loveland's electorate ensure that our voices are heard? <clears throat> Luckily, there's precedence that the council could use to uphold these democratic principles. Determine the will of the people by submitting the garage to a vote. In 2007, Loveland was faced with a similar decision, whether or not to build a YMCA. Since it was an expensive project with strong opposing views, the council wanted citizen input and put it on a referendum. The voters went to the polls and voted the project down. This is how democracy can work. My recommendation to the new council who support the garage is to let the people vote on it. The recent election suggests the public doesn't want it. Ignoring voter input from the recent election and restricting voter input in the upcoming election is certainly not democratic. It's not too late for council to make this right. Loveland goes to the polls again on May 3rd. To the new council, this is your chance to show that you are listening to us, not developers or outside interests. Your responsibility to listen to the voters does not end once the election is over. That is when your responsibility begins. Thank you.